Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again. Just before I put out the league review video and record it as well, uh, for the Sanctum League, I had time to squeeze one more build in, which I'm playing right down to the very end, uh, finishing off some challenges. And that build is Energy Blade Cast on Crit Eye of Winter. Eye of Winter came out with a new microtransaction and I've been wanting to play Eye of Winter for quite a while. Um, in a more modern setting, and uh, this was the perfect excuse to be able to do it. This build is basically centralized around Energy Blade, which is a skill that gives you a lot of lightning damage to a weapon, um, or turns your weapon into an Energy Blade, a completely different weapon that has a lot of lightning damage based off of your energy shield. It cuts your energy shield in half and then gives you a lot of lightning damage based off of that. My current weapon is something like 100 to 3400 lightning damage uh, because it takes 8000 of my energy shield away and then if you use Battle Mage from the Inquisitor Ascendancy you can apply that to spells and if you do that essentially you can run any spell you want uh, because the main portion of the spell's damage is going to be coming from uh, the lightning damage on energy blade. So in this case I'm running uh, Eye of Winter, but you could honestly put anything in uh, that you like or that you think is mechanically stronger. Uh, but overall, I've actually been very pleasantly surprised with how Eye of Winter performs in this sort of build. Uh, the trigger I'm using is Lancing Steel, um, so you, I'd, I'd love to be able to use Lancing Steel in some other setups, but it doesn't work for something like Cospreys, for example, because it's not a melee trigger. Uh, so you do get the benefit of being able to do kind of whatever trigger you want here and Lancing Steel is a pretty good one Though Cyclone is going to have probably a high proc rate at times. It's very melee and Lancing Steel on the other hand is um, Quite a bit more ranged and spread out so you don't necessarily have to aim as well either Either way, it's been a pretty damn good build. I think it's the best energy blade character I've done Probably by a decent margin. I think the uh, Rage Vortex was actually pretty successful as well. But overall this one plays a lot nicer. And it's a very well-rounded character. It could contest for Build of the League, I'd say. But it didn't quite um, have as much smoothness in some endgame as I would have liked. And by that I just mean like Simulacrum, I think. Didn't love it there. But otherwise, up to this point, um, it's mapped up to 95 very smoothly. Pretty much never dying um, to anything during mapping um, and then most of the ubers haven't tried Exarch and Eater of Worlds but killed all the rest of the ubers and um, lots of good four ways, five ways, so feared, four ways, that sort of thing. It's very good against anything that has um, an extra target to chain off of and just as a bit of bonus footage i'm showing you firestorm as well for anyone excited about doing firestorm uh, with the new vile skill firestorm is currently kind of cancer for visuals this is the non-mtx firestorm right here um, i mean granted this is cast on crit but it's with no area and um, no awakened spell cascade. If you do a proper big firestorm build, it's probably going to be an absolute visual nightmare. And then of course, add the vile, vile firestorm in on top of that. And yeah, you're gonna probably have some problems, but um, this is just a quick little showcase to show you what firestorm looks like uh, in case you're looking into that. But to go back to the Lancing Steel and the Eye of Winter, um, just gonna be some boss footage now, basically a uh, few guardians and four ways and a couple of ubers and stuff uh, like i was saying if, if there's an extra mob to chain off of because we're using snake pit then you are having a real good time with your output and um i winter currently in this sort of setup does feel like um, it actually very much benefits from the range at which you are hitting because where it ends up and the projectiles that end up hitting or well, the amount of projectiles and shit seem to matter quite um quite a lot from the distance that you're going to be proccing from. So if you're proccing just pretty far away or really close, you're not going to be getting maximum DPS. If you're right on where you're supposed to be, then it seems to do a lot more damage. Uh, either way, it's still very good damage. So it doesn't most of the time matter too much, but it was kind of noticeable when trying to like test DPS ranges on Uber Maven, for example. Aside from that, the um, yep, yeah, four ways are just a great time. Was doing them well rolled, so they had like damage mods and 
a few speed mods, shit like that occasionally, and it wasn't too much of an issue. A hidden, uh, this is a breach one, noticeably thicker than some of the others, but still can be managed. Uh, my recovery system for this build is uh, essentially just a bunch of energy shield and then some energy shield regen since we are an inquisitor using the uh, consecrated ground and energy regen nodes um, I've got about like 900 to 1000 ES regen and on top of that also using some life leech that then gets converted to energy leech uh, and using ghost reaver with it so the ghost reaver helps me uh, have some sustain in that form as well you could go many different ways for your defenses and your um, sort of overall package for this character and I'll show you a much bigger version that um, someone else can attain uh, in a previous league but the, the core concept is fairly well thought out uh, among other people as well which is just ivory tower a lot of int and strength as an inquisitor and that gives you a lot of crit and then basically you're just stacking int and strength um, for your energy shield for iron will and yeah you can go into really big energy shield numbers and into much more defensive setups uh, this one is kind of just a cheaper attempt at the entire thing where I've managed to get like 16,000 energy shield uh, which then gets cut in half to 8,000 but yeah you can definitely go to like 15, 20,000 style energy shield with absolute maximum stuff happening but uh, yeah trying to keep it somewhat budget so as far as the ubers are concerned they're not super great uh, did a few mavens in the end uh, with a few deaths here or there but can be done deathless for sure uh, the character doesn't the way I've built it doesn't really have much mitigation it's just a bunch of energy shield uh, you can have more mitigation but I'm playing more of a sort of evasive maneuver style setup at the moment because I didn't really want to go down the coruscating uh, flask route because if you go down coruscating flask route and I'll go over that in a sec uh, you can fill out all of your mana and then not have to worry about uh, chaos damage from uh, ivory tower messing about with mana and all that but uh, yeah just got a bunch of energy shield bit of recovery good damage and uh, a defensive sort of ranged playstyle which is enough to be able to take on all the ubers uber serious I mean I died a few times on the last phase and just had to kind of come back in and recover uh, otherwise just a couple deaths on like this uber uber elder with maven on it so i was getting like four five shapers at a time sometimes uh, and still managed to take that down too so very nice build to finish the league off i'm just gonna quickly log in and show you how the entire character is put together it's fully viable in the next league i don't think anything changes let me just go ahead and show you how to do that there's a character level 95 last patch spam patch is just an emote uh, in twitch chat that's to do with the um pact in uh, sanctum the last time we we're going to do any sanctum action so level 95 inquisitor as you can see a thousand int 980 strength at the moment 8.1k es with 6.2k life that's getting pretty much fully reserved uh, if we turn our energy blade off that's our current energy shield reserve but if we turn energy blade on uh, as you can see we then have a weapon that has a lot of lightning damage and good crit attack speed uh, and all of that lightning damage will be applied to our spell uh, which is eye of winter so you can see decent bit of cold but predominantly lightning damage and that is thanks to the battle mage instruments of virtue node um, done done it with plenty of setups so you can do some battle mage action the entire inquisitor and you can pick whatever one of these nodes to steal from the forbidden flesh forbidden flames when i made this character they're worth like fucking 50 ch so it really just depends um on the meta and the timing as to how expensive any of these things are going to be but essentially you then have the energy blade and we're scaling lots and lots of energy shield to cut our energy shield in half and then still have plenty uh, we are using ivory tower which is giving you energy shield per 100 reserve life so if you're scaling lots of strength and int you get lots of max life you get lots of um, percent energy shield so lots of max life there lots of percent energy shield there uh, you spec some life on the tree and then try and reserve all of your life 
and that gives you lots of flat energy shield. It's um, pretty competitive with Ghost Wrath, like a real easy budget starter for Energy Blade. It's Ghost Wrath, you get lots of life and then convert uh, that to energy shield, um, but it's a bit trickier to sort of take care of the chaos damage taken thing um, if you're going to reserve any more life so you got chaos damage taken from mana before life which um, when i've got 1300 mana at the moment and capped chaos res that means that i can manage that with lots of mana regen i can um, manage the incoming chaos damage of course too much chaos damage will still be able to overwhelm you but that honestly rarely happens um, with the amount of chaos res we have but you can instead do a Coruscating Elixir, which um, will... Let's actually just show you what it'll do. It sets up a bit of a different play style altogether. Um, I'm not sure I even have one. Wait, flasks. Coruscating Elixir. Yeah. Um, sets up a bit of a different play style. So you increase the duration, you increase the... Um, you know, up to 12 seconds or some shit. Uh, and then you'll take the um, Brutal Restraint node tricks, so something like that. Uh, it lets you get more flask regen, and um, you can take away a couple of these flasks. Currently, the life flask is only there for um, Corrupting Blood Immune, and this mana flask, for the most part, is an emergency damage if I take lots of chaos, but it's fine. Uh, the Topaz is there just because... I needed something. So they're all kind of luxury flasks. If you take one or two of these flasks away and run a Coruscating Elixir, um, you can reserve all of your uh, mana as long as you have still fixed mana to the point where you can keep casting with um, all of your attacks. And then you just constantly keep up Coruscating Elixir by pressing it one time um, at the start of any map going with reuse at the end of flasks effect. You'll be able to sustain all of your flasks that way if you really want to do that. I didn't really want to do that. Um, so just tried to unreserve some mana, which means I don't have an extra offensive or defensive aura, some shit like that. Uh, anyway, Ivory Tower combined with Crown of the Inward Eye, lots of um, extra damage from our scaling of energy shield, etc. Uh, we then have a Wrath Pith. First time I've actually used one of these in modern setting. Uh, it sacrifices your life when you use or trigger spell skill, but it doesn't kill you. So it's just 10% of whatever you got left, really. So as you can see, my life right there using that. Yep takes a bit away it comes back no big deal uh but then crit damage uh crit strike chance for spells per 100 max player life and then five percent increased spell damage per 100 max player life so it gives a lot of spell damage gives a lot of crit um percent life decent energy shield uh just pretty much pure upsides in this type of a build uh we then also run shapers touch which give a lot of uh, accuracy takes care of our accuracy also gives a decent bit of mana uh, and a lot of energy shield so that's the main purpose for those can have some good um, implicits on them percent life attack crit spell crit currently though with my setup uh, i am running oh where are we 99.66 base crit on the lancing steel and 90 where are we? A hundred spell crit on the Eye of Winter. Uh, it's basically just hit a hundred percent. So there it is. Uh, running a snake pit for the chain, um, for the Eye of Winter, and for the Lancing Steel. Uh, we have projectile from spells, so yeah, not Lancing Steel. Uh, just for the Eye of Winter. Uh, then just grabbed the ring I've used earlier in the league. Uh, lots of resists. Um, belt with some stats, so gravity, hunter, stygian, just rolled with um, strength essences till some good shit happened. Grabbed chaos res, boots, fracture, and then just rolled them with strength essences, so I got int, and then finished off the prefixes. And then an amulet I used earlier, which, once again, grab a fracture, roll int, or crit multi essences till you hit some good stuff ideally though you are also going to jorgen tier 3 in research and getting percent attributes as a talisman um it's the end of the league i couldn't be fucked doing that but it's a pretty big change in output you get like 15 percent increase to your stats and then ultimately that means you're getting like an extra almost 200 to each of these stats uh as an implicit so it's pretty big but i just didn't do that because it's the end of the league don't really have time or desire to do it so the main link setup here is um, 
Lancing Steel into Cast on Crit into Eye Winter. I'm then running Crit Damage because we don't have much crit on the tree or anything like that. Um, Arcane Surge because I'm actually proccing a lot of mana um, usage and then Hypothermia. But for mapping, I'm running Faster Proj because it does kind of feel a lot nicer having a lot of proj speed. Um, other than that, we have Precision. Uh, you can see we have one Abyssal Socket in our Energy Blade. So Energy Blade will respect the Abyssal Socket on the base item. Nothing else is going to matter, so that's pretty much all you can do for the weapon that gets turned into an energy blade. Uh, using shield charge, faster attacks, purity of elements, uh, vitality, discipline, uh, anomalous arrogance, so that's what helps us reserve life. Then using hero device, mostly for aesthetics, but for a bit of extra clear as well. Uh, mark on hit, sniper's mark, enhance, and energy blade. So energy blade can be affected by enhance. Pretty much the only thing you can really do to it, uh, which then gives uh, your energy blade a bit more crit. Uh, as well as that, Enhance gets a bit more damage for Sniper's Mark. And then I have Flame Dash, Clarity, and Arcane Surge just to help proc it every now and again um, from our Flame Surge. Flame Dash. Uh, the tree is definitely one that's a bit interesting. So you can see this orange line happening there. That's because we are trying to snake our way around for split personality. 5 strength, 5 int on this one and on this one. So for this one over here, it's 87 strength and int. On this one, it is 82 strength and int, um, which means that it's the furthest point away from um, your start point. So we can't connect this node, for example, or we'll make more efficient travel here or there. Uh, so it's just all the way around here, all the way through there, getting lots of good stuff in the form of mostly just life nodes, a few stat nodes here or there. I uh, picked up the arcane surge nodes over there. Um, otherwise we're still going around, 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 and we get low life pain attunement. We get stats over there and, uh, some crit multi. Aside from that, um, got a 10% max mana as ES clarity watches with chaos res as well for purity. This thing was a few divines, but, um, you can go without the chaos res if need be, uh, or even without that. Let me see how much that actually gives me. Yeah, it's not even that mandatory, honestly, like 600 ES from the clarity. It's kind of whatever. Uh, it's probably the best option for a watcher's eye, though. Uh, you then have um, this Brutal Restraint, just helps with dexterity. Otherwise, it's just got project damage and life. Nothing too special. Just mostly helps with dexterity while giving a few bonuses. But like I said, you can do the um, node that helps with flasks and then sustain coruscating elixir. Uh, we then have life reservation over here. You got your unwavering stance, you got iron will, and another jewel socket that just does a bit of life and crit multi. I think that's about it. Um, I can show you the viewer build that it's somewhat based off of. So I've done a build somewhat like this, but he had a much more fleshed out version, and I decided to like yoink plenty of inspiration from it. Um, this was demon from chat and uh he did this one during the calandra league uh so it's not at all replicable in its current form um just because these rings like jewelry just can't exist and as well the way i was building it i was gonna have to use a snake pit so i couldn't use two good rings like this anyway but otherwise similar enough concept you can see he's got fourteen thousand energy shield without um any like uh, with with it being cut in half so he's doing the coruscating elixir setup that you're using through uh the traitor keystone there um and then he's doing a much more expensive setup in that he's yoinking radiant faith so that when you're reserving everything you're getting um like a bunch more uh armor and then building more into armor so it's a much better build overall but it's going to be much more expensive the way he's built it um but I'll also link that one for you guys if you want to, like, see inspiration from a, a bigger version overall. But you can see it's a lot more life. Uh, it's a, you know, Calandra version that just can't exist anymore. Um, but there's still some other principles like the Radiant Faith that uh, you might want to yoink into another build. Either way, uh, this is just, um, it's, it's a fairly... I'd say common version of building, common way of building energy blade uh, with the strength in stacking at this point. This is my version, an attempt at it. Hopefully it didn't go too expensive. Nothing about this changes, I don't think, that I can think of for next league. So it's not a starter build by any means, but it is one that you could eventually make, I'd say. Uh, so with that, hope you guys enjoyed this video and the build. Thank you very much for watching.
See you next time.